Professor, I know you know you have also ex lots of experiences and also understanding about this ongoing pandemic. So can you share with us a little bit of your insights on this pandemic? And also, you know, you have students in Canada. So how do they deal with this uh, ongoing pandemic? Thank you for the question. And first of all, it's a great opportunity for me to see uh, Dr. Shi again. And uh, we have collaborated with Dr. Shi over the years. And also, I feel uh, very much uh, <coughs> impressed by Dr. Shi as the president of the hospital and the lead of the team. I went to Wuhan to fight with the coronavirus, and I followed uh, his uh, um, uh, WeChat message almost every day. And I really appreciate it. It's a great leadership and a great expertise in the fighting the, the COVID-19 in China. So uh, in terms of uh, the, the question, I listened to the question from the colleagues from Zambia about the education, about the training. Uh, maybe we can share a little bit of our experience with you. Uh, to me, I think uh, it's a great question, but also it's a very much uh, um, uh, challenging question because the uh, the travel, international travel, become uh, difficult, and uh, we highly relies on the online training. And for the course-based training, it's relatively easier and maybe even better than in the past to do online. But uh, as we all know, the medicine is a, is a practicing science, especially the surgery. You need to have a hands-on. And a lot of things uh, without hands-on, it's really hard to train. Mm -hmm. So it is a great challenge. And what I can share uh, with you uh, in the University of Toronto over the, uh, the past four months, how we did our lockdown, how we try to recover. So maybe give you some uh, impression about uh, how this situation managed and how that can be managed better. Um, so I still remember very clearly our university, the last meeting I was in the university was March 13th. And today is uh, July 13th, exactly four months. So four months of stay at home. It's really a, a very special experience for the whole life. And but I have to say the four months is very uh, busy. It's not a kind of a paid vacation at home. Actually, it's even more busy than uh, than the past. So what I can share with you our experience in the University of Toronto. I will say uh, perhaps three key words. Uh, what we we are doing. Number one is a strong leadership. Uh, number two is uh, uh, safety. Number three is a student-centered. So those are three uh, our experience. So first is about the leadership. When the pandemic start, and I think we are not, we were not very well prepared. Even though the situation happened in China, we watch what happening in China every day and are worried about what happening there. But we actually here in North America was not very well prepared. When the pandemic comes, it's really a kind of a sudden uh, uh, outbreak. It's really difficult. So the leadership becomes extremely important. Our university pro provost canceled her own academic leave and stay on the leadership role. And the dean of medicine uh, immediately returned from his academic leave back to uh, the to work. Then every hospital, every department, every academic unit have immediately developed our uh, kind of a emergency plan and uh, to make sure that every day there's someone in the place to take an immediate response. And also for every leader, um, you have to make, make a backup plan in case uh, the the, the director or the dean is not available, who will be the second, who will be the successor, who will be the second successor. So for my whole life, this is the first time I have to choose uh, my successors from my colleagues. It's a kind of a, uh, a soldier before you go to the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So that kind of a leadership is very, very important for every institution. And also the coordination between the universities in the teaching hospitals, this really happens immediately. The second um, experience is about safety. So we, 
emphasize the safety, safety, safety uh, very much. So everything we do is try to protect our students, our staff, and our faculties. So all the uh, education turned to be online. So we had a great difficulty before the pandemic about developing online training, online courses. And, but immediately when we run into this pandemic, all the things has to be turned to be online immediately. So it's really a big challenge. And also it's amazing to see how quickly within a week, then everything turned from a real person teaching to become online teaching. All the meetings, all the PhD examinations all turned to be online. And uh, uh, it, it take a time, but uh, the measure is try to protect our students our faculty and the, and the staff. So this is a, a very important. Another thing is the student centered. So we have many students very, very anxious about how to do with their training and with the delay of the degree completion. And especially what I mentioned about the hand on. So without hands on, then uh, how can you finish up your research? So a lot of anxiety uh, developed. So what we try to do is we immediately develop town hall meeting uh, with the students and to answer their questions. And we also have scheduled the one-on-one -on -one meeting with our leadership with, uh, with the students. And you may know that uh, in America, there is a bigger uh, uh, movement about anti-racism. And here it's also uh, in Canada, in rest of the world, students are very much co uh, concerned about um, the attitude of the university, of our faculty, uh, how we, how you guys are doing with the anti-racism. So the student raised a lot of a serious concern and some students even uh, raised their own personal experience to tell us when they were a student in the university, they have been discriminated. So a lot of concerns raised immediately and which really interrupted the student uh, uh, training. So we immediately call meetings with the student one-on-one -on -one or in group. And we also try to encourage the student to take the leadership role to develop research programs on the, on the well-being to make sure that students help each other, the faculty support their student very well. So I think this is a, another example. The last example I will give to, to uh, the group is when the student locked down at home, what do they do? So most of the research and the training are hands-on. Without hands-on, what do you do? So students uh, kind of, kind of uh, need some guidance. So what we try to do is uh, immediately organize our student try to do a literature review. As what I said, um, even though many, many papers published uh, by our Chinese colleagues about how, how they deal with the QVAT, and those information were not very well summarized in the Western world. So we try to organize our students to make a working group, try to review by subject by subject how our Chinese colleagues did and also try to uh, transfer those information to our clinical team. And also we use, take this as an opportunity to training our students how to collect the information, how to analyze the information, how to write a, a systemic review uh, on a particular subject. So the literature really booming. So when we start in March, there is a 1700 publications uh, majority from China, but now it's a thousands of thousands of new publications from different countries come up. So through the literature review, the students learned and also this helped them to finish their own thesis. So by keeping the student busy, keeping them more educated, and I think uh, we are uh, prepared very well 